Welcome to this act of worship from the benefice of St Stephen's Lansdowne and St Mary's Cholcombe. My name's Philip Pawthorne. I'm the rector and it's great to welcome you wherever you're watching this and whenever you're watching. God isn't bound by time or by place and God's Spirit unites us as we seek to worship together and to draw closer to the love of God and to find that love of God in our lives. Normally we have a similar service at both churches. This week uh, it's slightly different. We've got um, a baptism and um, Isabel Dixon is being baptised at St Stephen's Lansdowne, which would be wonderful. Uh, and that's a kind of a, an all age communion there. And then here at Chalcombe, um, we'll be having a more traditional Eucharist. Uh, and instead of a sermon this week, we're just going to look at the passage and chat about it and see what comes out. So that's what I hope to recreate for you today. I don't really know what's going to happen as we look, look at the passage together, um, but God's Spirit will guide us, I'm sure. Um, if you want to look at the passage, I, I suggest you do stop the, stop the video and go and find it. It's um, in Mark 7 and uh, it's uh, from verse 24 to the end, so Mark 7. So you might like to stop, find a Bible or go online and get the reading. Um, I'll be reading from the NRSV, uh, but you can find it in any, any version you like, and you'll have it with you then, and we can look at it together. Great, we're going to have a moment of quiet. As, as you can see, the, the church is open today, and, we're, and I'm outside, so anything could happen. People could walk past, who knows? But uh, it just seemed fitting uh, to do it this way, to do the service this way today. And also you get the chance to see the beauty of the St Mary's Garden. So we're going to gather ourselves, uh, I'll sound this bowl, and as the silence takes over from the ringing of the bowl, the singing of the bowl, that's when we pray that God's Spirit will quieten us and that we'll be able to attend to God in the quiet. So here we are, a moment of quiet for us. Loving God, be present. Be present as we read your word, as we reflect on it, and we ask that you draw us closer to your heart of love for us and for the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Quite a lot of midges around, so if, he's, if I'm scratching my forehead, then it's because of those. So the reading from Mark's Gospel. Uh, do stop it now and get, get the reading if you like. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And Jesus said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee. In the region of the Decapolis, they brought him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay hands on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, put his fingers into his ears and spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. Immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. I, um, I love... Karen Armstrong, a writer, uh, and she 
said, never leave a passage of scripture until you found the compassion in it. And every week or every time I preach, I read the, the passages of scripture and I, I ask God to show the compassion in it. Sometimes it's very straightforward, there is in this um, hugely. Um, and sometimes it's more difficult, but the trust is it, that it's there, it's there. Um, because the word is God's and God is compassion and love. So let's see what we can find out from this passage. And I'll, I'll guide us with a few questions that I would normally use to, to, to interrogate the passage and to find out which um, angle to take or what to, what, how to get most from it. So from there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and came and bowed down at his feet. So let's just think of the context for this reading. Um, it's in the middle of miracles. We've had the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus walking on the water, healing a lot of sick people. And then the last passage that was actually last week's reading was about when some of the Pharisees see the disciples not washing their hands properly and not observing the ritual around food and stuff and say to Jesus, these can't be real, you know, they can't be religious people because they're not observing the rules. And Jesus says, look, it's not about, you know, good religion is not about the outward, it's about the inward. It's what, not what goes into the body that defiles, it's what come out, comes out. And we talked about how religion can be defiled if we uh, obey only with our, the outside and not, and not with our hearts. What's, what's in our hearts is really important. So I suppose Jesus is talking about um, what's made up, uh, and, you know, what, what are the forms of religion and what is the, the, the true goodness, the heart or the beauty of religion. And that's the passage just before this. So that's a good way to consider the context of why Mark has put this story here. Um, because, you know, the, the Gospels weren't written as you know, fly on the wall documentaries or you know, someone who was actually there recording everything sequentially. Um, it were, I went to the Canaletto exhibition at the, the Hoban, which is great. And, you know, Canaletto in uh, the 17th century would have um, made sketches of the different parts of Venice that he was going to, to paint. Um, and, you know, and then obviously he didn't have a camera, so he'd be drawing gondoliers and people in the streets and things. And then he would make the painting from these sketches. And I think that's good image of what I think the gospel writers did. They, they, they had the impression of being with Jesus. They had stories about him. They, they, some of them had seen the things he'd done. And the gospels are like sketches, paintings put together from the different bits of truth. So there may not be a complete chronological order of stories, but they are nevertheless made up of true things. Hey, do, do, do go on up. It's great. <laughs> nice to see. How was the Holy Well? It was great, thank you. Whoa. And we just teach her that it's not a pond. Yeah, well, <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> really? Holy well. It is. It's lovely to see you all. She does a, she it's, does a, a pun, it's a pond and it's a pond and a baby bath. Really? It's the little one, a baby bath. Oh, it is. It is like yeah. that. <laughs> Enjoy your evening. You. Great to see you. So we have that in mind as we look at this passage um, and we can see that we can see that straight away because Jesus has gone from a largely Jewish place into a largely Gentile place or, or a very Gentile place so he's he's going out of the comfort zone into uh, somewhere else and I think this gives us an idea of how Jesus works out his ministry and the other thing to remember is Jesus was a rabbi you know a very important um, and much followed teacher, religious teacher. So wherever he went, there were hundreds of people. And generally speaking, there were men. Um, and it would, this, this house he went into, we don't know why, he could have gone in for something to eat or he could have gone in to do a, you know, a, a study on the scriptures or to talk. We don't, know, we don't know why that is, but generally it's gonna be the men who are there, the men who are gonna be around listening to him and interacting with him. And so the first thing we notice is that a woman was there. Uh, so that says to us the bravery 
of that woman to come into the come into this male environment and it's uh, it undoubtedly would have been ridiculed for being there um, and you know would have been insulted um, and you know possibly you know would want maybe tried be tried to push push out but she's obviously stayed uh, and then it says the woman was of a gentile um, origin and she begged him to cast a demon out of her daughter so she's recognized Jesus for who Jesus is which is something that the Pharisees didn't do in the last story they you know, they were all ready to criticize him uh, and to threaten him because he claimed so much but this woman recognizes him as as the wonderful healer teacher and the son of God uh, that that he is and then we get this line where she begs him to cast a demon and Jesus says to her let the children be fed first for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs and there's been a lot of controversy over this um, because it seems that Jesus is really insulting this woman um, and that goes against everything that Jesus does. Jesus insults Pharisees and religious people all the time but he has such an amazing kindness and respect and connection with women um, and by his treatment of them elevates them in in the society uh, that really looked down on women. A woman's word wasn't taken you know in any way seriously and a woman's presence was of often not wanted at all. Let the children be fed first it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs he says. So I think what this means is that the children are the Jews are uh, those of Israel, those of, of his own kind. Uh, and the food is the gospel, this message of good news that Jesus brings. And the dogs would have been a, a joint, hi there, would have, would have had a joint meaning, but possibly she was called that by some of the, the people there. Uh, but also the Gentiles were, would be known as dogs as well. And I think it's quite interesting. Now, I, 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 because, of, because of how Jesus is all the, all the time with, with other women, I, I read this as, as playful. Maybe he's picking up on something that the other men around have said. Um, and she replies brilliantly, you know, the, um, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And Jesus says, yeah, great, yeah, I, that's, that's brilliant. Uh, your daughter's better, yeah, do go and, and, and see to her. Uh, so I see rather than rather than an insult, uh, I, see, I see this as playfulness and, and, and the ultimate kindness. And maybe, maybe Jesus has gone to the Gentiles because he's trying to work out, this is early in Mark's Gospel, he's, he's trying to work out exactly who he is for, who, who his message is for, uh, which obviously the Pharisees and the Jews can't get at all because the, the Gentiles are unclean. Start. But in the last passage, they've, said, they've called his disciples unclean for not washing their hands. So Jesus is talking about what's, what's clean is to extend the kingdom beyond the comfortable, beyond the, the uh, regions that the Jews would have had, way out into a new. So, you know, it's taking God's love and making it ever more inclusive and ever broader and deeper than it ever has been. Um, which is, which is great. I mean, that's a, that's a wonderful thing to reflect on. And there is the compassion for a start in it. Um, and I'm just imagining what that, that, the bravery of that woman to, to be there, uh, to recognize Jesus for, for who he is, um, to trust him with this story, with her life, um, with her daughter. You know, that would have made her even more unclean. Uh, to trust that he was going to hold that story uh, closely and and to bless her through it um, and she was humbled as well it says the first thing the first thing it says uh, she bowed down at his feet so she recognizes him as as her lord and her god uh, which is you know the pharisees never did so there's a wonderful mutuality between of service between them that she worships him and he gives her the respect and, and raises her in her uh, dignity um, in, that, in that situation. Um, yeah, 
I think that's I think that's the main bit of that. And then of course the second half is Jesus curing the the, the deaf man still in in Gentile territory. And there's a lot of references in the Gospels to uh, opening the eyes of the blind, um, unblocking the ears of the deaf. And there are lots of healings, but they're always drawn um, parallel with a spiritual seeing, an inner seeing. And we are in the realm of the inner here. Um, you know, Jesus is saying true religion is is having that love in your heart uh, and 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 giving people, you know, sharing that love with people um, because they're people rather than you know that they rather than just obeying the the outward signs of religion and so i think you know mark has put these two stories together to enable us to be that hi there hello hi <laughs> very well thank you um to enable us to to ask for that to ask for that openness uh, that our blindness is cured our deafness is is cured and we can see and hear the true gospel the true religion of jesus love which includes everyone and is beyond our imagining and that that lovely it ends they were astounded beyond measure i love that here they were astounded beyond measure Uh, so maybe that's our prayer today that we may be ever astounded beyond measure at the broad deep wonderful love of god just going to spend a couple of moments now just reflecting on that and see if there's anything else to say maybe you can have a think have a thought as well about what you take from this passage I think the only other thing I'd like to say is you know how does that how does that affect us how does that make us feel and What does that make us look for? And I think it will be to find, like Jesus, to find the voices that are outside of the comfort zone. Um, How broad and how astonishingly wide can we take the love of God into the world? And this week I got an email from a woman, I can't remember her name now, and I can't remember the name of the organisation, but it's, it's to do with making prisoners who've been released from prison who want to go to church it's about making them work them welcome in churches Uh, a lot of them who have faith don't feel you know feel that churches are uh you know dangerous places to be because they're 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 being mistrustful since they find out they're ex ex cons Uh, and it's about preparing churches to receive prisoners they you you know to put churches on on a on a register that people can look at and know that they're inclusive um, that's why that, that she came to us and I think that's a really maybe that is a really good example of of how we can have that outrageous hospitality that Jesus has for this woman the sorry Phoenician woman and it's just a shame we don't know her name uh, it would have been lovely to have known that but uh, she's known and we'll know one day and that will be wonderful and we can talk to her about how it felt as well Let's pray together now. We'll just keep quiet and I'll pray a few prayers, but do allow your own prayers to fill that space. So we pray for prisoners who are being released from prison who seek to find a church in which to worship you. And we pray that we as churches and people of all faiths may find that generous love in order to welcome all people. We'll be talking about that in our PCC meetings at both churches, so we pray for those discussions. We pray for Afghanistan and the just dreadful, dreadful things about that feeling really hopeless and helpless. So we bow down at your feet as the woman did and ask that you heal that country and those those people, that you drive out fear and you bring in love and mercy. We 
pray for our living planet and the threat of climate, climate change and the actuality of climate change and pray for those in on the northeast part of the United States and the floods this week and all who are affected by this change in climate. Just a moment for you to pray about anything else in the news or on your heart or mind at the moment. Don't even have to use words, just hold it in your mind and heart. Pray for Debbie, our wonderful Reverend Debbie from our benefice. Um, her daughter Cece married Jeremy uh, at the weekend on Saturday. We pray for them as they begin their married life. And we pray for someone who I know, Diane, who lives locally, who is in the last, probably in the last weeks of her life. Pray for her and her family. And we know people who are sick or ill. So from St Mary's we pray for Bill and Mary and Sally and Muriel and baby Eloise. And at St Stephen's we pray for Richard and Tony and Caroline, Janine, pray for Simon. And we pray for Millie. Just in a moment, just hold those that you know who need God's touch of healing, especially at the moment. Pray for Isabel, who was baptised at St Stephen's, and for Ellie and Kenny, Josh and William. And we pray especially for her grandmas, Isabel and Caroline. So great joy. We pray for the family of Anne Harris from St Mary's, who, who died in the last couple of weeks, and the funeral will be the week after next. Pray for Philip and Claire and Rupert and all the family and our family here at St Mary's. Such a great loss. And we pray for Cedric Clayton and his family. His funeral was last week. And also the family of David Skinner who died recently too. So maybe hold those who you know are grieving at the moment. we collect all our prayers in the prayer that Jesus taught us as we pray together with confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. It's been great sharing this time together with you. Um, and if you do have any more thoughts on that passage, do email them. It would be lovely to, to hear what you think uh, of that. And have uh, a really, really good week. If you want to give to the work of God in our churches, then if you go onto our websites, which uh, I'll put on the, the YouTube link, for this uh, service, then yeah, please do that. That would be great. It would be really great to, to do that. So, a blessing for us. Christ has no body but your body to be God's presence now. No hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes to see compassion. Yours are the feet to journey for good. Yours the heart to beat for peace and justice you the way of the spirit's blessing and the blessing of god who is creator redeemer and abiding and kindly spirit be with you and remain with you and all you love pray for miss and remember in this moment 
and for always. Amen. Bless you.